and I'm about to go ride for a little bit. Hopefully, have us a good time. Go get something to eat in here in a little while, and uh, then it'll be time to go to work. About the same thing I normally do every day. Go hit these back roads for a little bit. Anything you wanted as a kid, and twenty dollars a lot of money. Now, the catch was if we broke anything on the mower, it got knocked down to ten dollars. If we broke two things on the mower, we didn't get paid. So, uh, needless to say, uh, I broke a lot of things for that to get put into effect. And after that, uh, uh, I slowed down riding, cut grass before it was wide open as fast as you could go. Maximum efficiency. The faster you uh, mowed the grass, uh, the more dollars per hour you made. It usually took two to three hours. You know, as I got older, I got it cut down to like maybe one and a half. But uh, yeah, it was fun. We used to have a, a old Cub Cadet garden tractor and then eventually that wore out. And then uh, we got like a newer Cub Cadet garden tractor and that one was even slower than the old one. And then uh, we got a Hustler Zero Turn, and uh, you can cut some grass on a Zero Turn, let me tell you. You can definitely cut some grass. And uh, yeah, that, that made it a lot easier, and a lot faster, and more fun. And uh, that was how I figured out uh, I enjoyed popping wheelies, because, you know, on a Zero Turn, you can pop wheelies real easy. Saddlebag, and then it's got a little flat spool rod that fits in it. 
uh, I think I run like six pound test or something. Nothing, you can catch anything on it. You're just gonna have to work for it. Yeah, it looks like we're going left. I think we'll end up in Bailey or somewhere down there. Who knows? I don't know. Nobody knows. That's the best part. Shipping containers stacked up. Fire Department Green Hornet. That's a cool name. I think they had a movie called that somewhere, but who knows. I got old feed mill up here. I don't know who that is. That looks like a, either the car's for sale, they're a cop, or who knows. Old dam out there. I've never actually gone fishing down there. I need to go fishing down here. Lover milling. Yeah, for sale. Yeah, they, I used to buy feed from them for the cows. Cows, sheep, uh, goats, stuff like that. We had a lot of critters growing up on the farm. And, uh, it's always, uh, always a challenge to uh, find the cheapest way to feed them. And uh, Glover Mill, and they, they make some pretty good feed. They use them to grow some pretty nice cows. The only thing I didn't like is it was in like a giant 100 pound uh, burlap sack and uh, I didn't weigh any more than like 130 or whatever so it was a little rough lugging them around and trying to feed cows with them. That was uh, it was challenging as a kid. You know, scrawny high school kid I wasn't very uh, I didn't have a lot of weight. I'm like 200 pounds now and I definitely enjoy being a lot bulkier than then. I can actually like move stuff around and uh, just work in general is a lot easier with that extra weight. I'm not necessarily, I'm not, I'm like a little bit fat but I'm not like out of shape, out of shape. I'm like, if I go to the gym for a couple months I'll be back in really good shape and uh, it's something I really need to work on. It's just my work schedule and uh, everything set up has uh, not really been concurrent to help with that. And, uh, I guess I lost my gym card for a while and then now I got it and I just don't go because uh, I like it when I have to work and it's just cold as shit and um, let me think. And uh, I don't have my gym clothes a lot of times. I packed a bag and then uh, I washed them and then now uh, I gotta find it all again, put it all right together because they don't like you going to the gym in like long pants and stuff. You know, I try to generally follow gym rules and stuff like that. Kid on the four wheeler. Nothing like seeing a kid out riding. That's awesome. Always wave to the kids that are out riding. You know, they're the next generation. When I'm like 50 or 60, they'll be my age. And uh, they'll be really cool. You know, that might have made a big Especially kids riding, like, when I was growing up, that was the high life of my, like, week, was getting out riding a four-wheeler, and, uh, you know, that's a great way to grow up. This is how I grew up, and, uh, I'm not gonna say I turned out alright, but, uh, I didn't do too bad. It'll hammer. 
it doesn't make like a ridiculous amount of numbers or anything. But uh, you know, it's it, the whole goal is to be a very, very good sleeper build. You know, you know, act like you're uh, not as much as you are. And it was also to be somewhat more manageable uh, riding through the mountains. I didn't really necessarily want like 160, 180 horsepower on something that I'm having to speed up and break down. Like it's kind of a fine line. I mean, as it is, this thing basically is a 600cc super sport, but on a uh, touring frame. The performance is, you're not as quick turning or whatever, but the acceleration, the speed, and the, the power, it just happens a ton more torque than uh, a 600. Like I said, it, this bike will go up to about, about 150, give or take a little bit, you know, depends on the gearing and uh, weather conditions and a few other factors like that, but I mean, it'll get to 130, 140 quick, and then um, like I said, you can ease it over to 150, which is about as fast as I really want to go on the chassis the way it's set up now, and even then I'm not really a giant fan of going that fast on it. But you get to about 120, you're like questioning your uh, decision making. Not because it's not stable or safe, it's just like, ah, I don't really need to be doing this. Probably not. Well, like, I'm just, I'm really chilling today. Ooh, little tiny pond. That'd be fun to fish. Now, there's a really nice pond to be trying to fish. Doesn't seem to be marked either, so. If you take care of the place and don't trash it, they might let you. They might let you come back. Or worst case, they'll just say, uh, "Eh, please don't come back." And I uh, respect that. I'm not somebody that's like, if you get told not to go there, I'm just obviously not coming back. I'm not gonna be a dickhead about it. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to fish for a bit. It wasn't marked. We didn't know. Um, we'll leave. Or you can ask somebody, talk to somebody, do you mind if we fish here for the day? And then, or can I get your contact information and ask? You know, just being polite when someone approaches you.
Like I said, if you're a little bit high, you better be going around. Because uh, it has a long list of uh, victims that uh, were not paying attention. If you don't know your height, it better just detour around. But uh, a lot of people, uh, especially coming from the other direction, yeah, it's, they, uh, they don't realize it until it's too late. Going that way, it's not as bad. You can kind of see it. But uh, the looks are deceiving. Yeah, my bike does not like going 35. It is not a fan of 35. I try to go to the speed limit through towns and try to not make too much noise, but it's still 35, good gracious, killing me. Pulled it 
out, whatever, and um, yeah, it made a good bit more power. I was like, okay, that's more in line with what I would expect, and uh, uh, that was uh, a lot better in my opinion. Consider like perfectly practical, or at least somewhat practical. Let's see if we can sneak in here. Yeah. a lot of bikes that are drive through but I'm one of like the few that'll do it I'm sure other people do but most people don't Just a sandwich and a large fry. Yep. Um, no thanks. Uh, Ben. Uh, Ben. Yep. Yep. Alrighty. 
Yep. Thank you. through on the bike not really any different than a car you just have to have your uh, your plan set up for uh, getting your money and uh, obviously getting the food and storage like I used to go through it on a uh, on a sport bike all the time I just shove it open up my jacket and just shove it right down the front of the jacket and uh, it kept my food warm at least on the way to work and uh, that worked out pretty well for me not something I would necessarily recommend, but uh, definitely was a viable option. Because um, other than that, you had to get off, take the seat off, maybe stick under the seat. Some bikes don't have storage under the seat, and um, it was just a fiasco. Like I really like having the bagger to where I got under the seat storage. Like it makes it so much nicer. Well, not under the seat, but I got saddlebags. I got a box on the back if I really need a lot more storage um, it's just so much more practical it's like I got these little pockets here and pockets there that you can put little stuff like um, you know I was like if I go on a big road trip like I'll get a prepaid card and just stick the prepaid card there use that for gas and food and all that stuff which is a good habit or uh, like I'll put money on my cash app card and use it like that that one is the other one can be a little bit more in here but uh, I've gone through it on the bike sometimes I'll shut it off sometimes I won't most of the time I just go in if I got time but sometimes like you just don't want to stop don't want to take the time to take all your gear off go in and put it all back on I said if I go in it probably takes me 10 15 minutes at least if uh, I go through the drive through maybe eight maybe eight minutes like that I know that was probably less than that that was reasonably quick I've seen a few. 
few little interesting things today, but not not too much. Like I don't know, some of the stuffs like just kind of normal everyday stuff. You got dealership row, Nissan, Ford. Then, um, up here you'll have Chevrolet, Honda, and Toyota. That's it. Uh, the only thing we don't really have here, I think, is our Hyundai dealership. I'm sure there's one stashed somewhere in a corner underneath the bridge or uh, buried uh, behind someone's uh, backyard. But, uh, yeah, I guess we don't really have a Kia dealership either. Like, I don't know. Hyundai's, in my opinion, are like the absolute last car you should ever buy. They're just awful. They look good on the inside, the interior's up to date, but the actual, like, working parts of the car are just god-awful. Like, the engines blow up all the time. They have a great warranty, and you absolutely need to warranty it. If it goes out, you need to punt that car as far as you can, because you're about to have a catastrophic failure as soon as it's out of warranty. At least, that's been my experience with the people that I know that have purchased them. And, uh, you know, they're just not made the standard that the American cars are. Not that American cars are much better. I think American cars in general are just cheap piles of shit. But at least they have like decent motors, decent transmissions. And of course being an American car you generally get good aftermarket. We like modifying our vehicles. Stock vehicles suck. At least that's most of our opinions. Some people would disagree and they could suck it. But um yeah, and then the Japanese people are just much better quality to go the exception to like maybe Nissan. Nissans are, uh, I hate Nissans. They're piles of uh, annoying, awkward to work on. Everything is uh, not well thought out. And um, it's like, have you ever tried to change a Nissan on an alternator on a Nissan? They go out every couple years. And um, in general, they just kind of like, they're just not made very well or the electrical system's designed poorly. Either way, they, they, they go through alternators and they're in a really bad spot to change. Like, I looked at one the other day and, uh, yeah, I looked at it. It's a 3.5 uh, liter V6 Maxima or Altima. Altima. And uh, it's just in a terrible location. Like, you got to remove the radiator, or the coolant bottle, drain all that stuff out. It's not like where it should be. It should be up top where you can just bolt it out and bolt a new one on. Stuff that can fail or, you know, is uh, something that's a normal replacement needs to be quick and easy access. You should be able to fix it in front of the auto parts store, not spend hours tearing the car apart and put it back in. I understand there's like space constraints and stuff, but you, you could do better. Like, there are ways to mount stuff where it's not a pain in the ass. To, uh, do your normal maintenance. I looked at it and I was like, "Yeah, I'm not, I'm not changing this. You're gonna need to take it. Somebody's got way more time than me." Now the 2.5 Ultima, like that one, the alternator's right there at the top, and uh, either at the top or at the bottom in the front. You can get to it without too much fan dangling, and uh, it's not that bad. But uh, um, the uh, V6 is awful. I mean, the motors are fairly decent, like they seem to last, and uh, they got a lot of potential, but uh, the actual uh, accessory location on the side is just terrible. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend a, a Nissan to most people, like, well, their oil filter locations are bad, there's just a lot of things that, uh, make it not a good car which is a shame because like the potential for you know a lot of things is there but it just wasn't wasn't uh, what you would expect you buy a car you want it to be reliable and you want uh, the servicing to be fairly easy you don't want something that's impossible to work on away from those guys I felt like I was not going anywhere this goes to show you like the discrepancy of power between like a 
a decently built bike in like a regular car like the power to weight on this thing is pretty good for uh, what it is obviously it's a Harley Harleys are not exactly light like this is like eh, I'm not sure I haven't put on a scale but if I had to guess it's like between 800 to a thousand pounds I'm like another 200 pounds you know all the gears like maybe another like 30 or 40 I don't have too much heavy stuff in the bike like I try to keep a lot of weight out of it oh, clutchless acceleration like right, I said it gets up to speed quick it, do it doesn't necessarily feel like it's ridiculously fast but it's not slow that's all that matters no he's not going to shoot in front of me that's weird like I said Nissan drivers they're about the most reckless and dangerous thing on the road the embodiment of reckless driving is a Nissan Altima with a missing front bumper or at least that's my idea that's my experience in eastern North Carolina you see a Nissan with a missing bumper you just kind of like get out of the way and let them go about their business because uh Obviously, I don't want no parts of that. Pallet truck or a 18 wheeler? Ugh, that's a both sketchy scenario. I don't necessarily want to be behind either one. Take the pallet truck. I'm hoping he probably will drive like he's got some sense. Maybe uh, he'll turn or whatever. Pallets are a big business. God, another Nissan. They're everywhere. It's almost like the the bad cheap cars. Like I don't get the appeal, but somebody does, and somebody is not me. got the uh, caution lights on either way I thought he was gonna turn maybe not maybe he'll turn as long as he doesn't stomp on it and slide the pallets out I'll be alright actually you know what let's go ahead and get around him there's a car like stopped right in the middle of the road right when I was trying to get around him that's a dangerous situation you gotta have a little sense there's some places you just don't want to be that's one of them I don't really want to be behind a guy with pallets in the truck they could be a disastrous occurrence if one slides out I think I could probably hit it and I might stay up, but why take the risk if you can avoid it? 10 out of 10. Would not recommend. Uh, swamp for sale. It seems to be a common thing around here. I've looked at a lot of swamp land. I've been wanting to buy some property. And, uh, yeah. None of it seems to be, like, super nice or attractive or you can build on it. You just got to... It seems to be a mess, but it's the only cheap land really worth it around here. And everybody knows I'm I'm cheap. Like I don't spend a lot of money on stuff other than motorcycles and I'll spend money on my girlfriend. And that's about it. Everything else cheap. Well, I'll buy I'll buy expensive tools when I need them. That falls under the category of like work expense.
I'll stop it for a second. Eat my lunch in here. Then slide over to work. I got a couple minutes. I can do some bullshit. I'm a dealer. Metric dealer. But they do have Harley, so you know that's always a positive thing. I'm not huge on the brand, but it is what it is. Until next time.